Hello everyone, welcome back to Intel Analytics Academy. This is uh, Sheikh and uh, this is video number two in the playlist uh, Data Science and Machine Learning uh, using Python programming in uh, Jupyter Notebook tool. So in the first video, we I just gave a quick intro into uh, the Jupyter Notebook tool, uh, which is very widely used in uh, data science uh, industry and used by many data scientists around the world and it is the preferred tool which is being used as of now and uh, in this video i will uh, walk you through a sample data set uh, we will look at that uh, sample data set and how we can uh, use the uh, python packages you know by importing it and uh, uh, using the inbuilt uh, packages to do machine learning with uh, that sample data set. So let's move on right away. Uh, let's move on to Anaconda Navigator. So if you have seen my previous videos, you might be aware of uh, this particular navigation tool, Anaconda Navigator, uh, which is the distribution uh, that uh, helps you to package all the required tools in one place so here on, on application zone you can see some lists like PyCharm, BaseRoot and other uh, environments we call it as virtual environments so even you can create your own environment with specific python version the base group will have a uh, default uh, python version attached to it so by default it is base root so you can see the list of tools which are uh, already installed on that on that particular uh, environment so uh, we are interested in jupyter notebook tool and uh, we can launch from within this uh, anaconda navigator just click on launch wait for it to load in internet explorer Let's wait for a few moments and uh, notebook will launch in Internet Explorer and it will uh, provide you all the notebooks that you have worked with till now or if you want to create a new notebook you can uh, create one uh, by clicking on uh, new so yes this is the UI and uh, we have it so click on last modified give you the uh, recent notebooks that you have already worked with file size based on file size you can sort and uh, can even upload uh, the notebooks which you have already worked somewhere else and even if you create a new one you want to click on new and uh, the specific version you need to click and start working with your data right away let us move on to jupyter notebooks folder so i have a very simple data set for you today to show uh, which is uh, insurance data set and it is very simple it just have uh, 10 data points so i will just show you so before starting uh starting uh with data so we'll need to import the required libraries as you as you are uh, already aware uh, we have to import numpy numerical python and give some alias name to it next is um, matplotlib for data visualization and you just give a alias to it plt and pandas as you know uh, pandas if you have seen my previous video so this pandas is the package which helps us to do data manipulation and processing uh, so this this is the one package or uh, we, you can see all these three packages are essential ones which you use in each and every notebook that you work with okay so let's move on so in the second cell what i have done is i have just used that pandas alias and read csv method to just uh, uh, fetch the data from a csv file so there are a lot of other methods in this uh, pandas which you can use like you can read uh, data from uh, csv file you can read data from json file json is another format but from different file formats you can uh, read data you have all the methods already built in you don't want to go anywhere to write your own method to call the uh, files so here i'm just calling uh, insurance.csv file so i'm not going to go into that uh, 
csv file because i can show you the data in line here itself without moving on to anywhere uh, from uh, this window so this pd.read csv will fetch the data and it will create you a data frame so as i said in my previous video data frame is something like a table which is created on the fly in the memory so that data frame now holds all your data uh, so you can use this data frame further uh, to process your data and do machine learning with it and predict any future data points so if you just simply give tf underscore insurance data you will get the data frame which is the table so you'll also see the index like uh, starting from as i said it is having 10 data points so it is having right from 0 to 9 and the first column is age and the second column is average claims per year in rupees so uh, you can imagine it is in the insurance industry as the age goes up the premium okay so premium obviously uh, goes up because the risk is higher for uh, uh, individuals with higher ages so for age 25 for example the average claims average claims per year approximately is 4500 so whereas you can see for age 70 uh, you can see the average claims per year is 1 lakh so you can see that so here you can see the relation between these two variables so here we call it as age we call it as independent variable okay and average claims per year in rupees we call it as dependent variable because this variable is dependent on age so in machine learning uh, you can imagine like we will predict the dependent variable which is the average claims per year based on the age so the input to the model will be the age you can input something like 33 if your age is 33 if you input in 33 model the machine learning model which i trained which we train using this data will give us the output uh, somewhere between 5200 300 once it is properly learned so our duty is to make the machine I and mean the algorithm learn as much as possible with the required data so that uh, it finds the pattern in the data and try to predict uh, future data points with the input data that we input in so when we come on to the next cell here you can see uh, so all mathematical operations will be performed on the matrix so now we create a matrix for dependent and independent variables so what we are doing generally here is we are using an iloc method in the data frame in pandas to uh, store the data as a matrix in two variables x for input and y for output so x is independent and y is uh, dependent variable so iloc method uh, if you want the exact declaration i mean the definition you can just go ahead and google it out it is very simple so this semicolon will give you all the rows comma zero semicolon one which will give you the row i mean the columns uh, from uh, starting from one i mean the first column it will fetch you so you can give it as zero semicolon one will fetch you only the uh, first column and uh, for dependent variable similarly all the rows comma one which means like the index we are uh, pointing to second column which is uh, in the first index will get you the data in the y matrix so dot values will put all the data into uh, this particular matrix so now we have x and y so plot as we already imported uh, with alias plt matplotlib so plot dot scatter here we are uh, drawing a scatter plot with the uh, already loaded x and y and color i have mentioned it as red so the x-axis you can see the age and the y-axis you can see the claims per year so when the age increases obviously the claims per year is uh, increasing so you can see the trend here when the age goes up the uh, claims per year goes up so you can see the pattern easily in this sample data set simple data set <laughs> but in data science and machine learning it is not the case this is just to make you understand uh, how the how you work with your data and uh, do machine learning with your data and predict any future data points but 
in the real world scenario it is quite complex you know you need to uh, process your data before inputting and fitting your uh, data into the model so in the next cell we move on to the next cell here in the next cell this is the three line of code which you are actually using to fit the data which you have to the machine learning algorithm so there are a lot of machine learning algorithms already available which you can uh, readily use so there is a package in python which is scikit learn sk learn that will provide you all the required i mean the traditional machine learning models you want to work with so for example you can uh, work with linear regression uh, you can work with um, uh, decision tree algorithm uh, we have a decision tree uh, a regressor as well as classification so in machine learning basically you have two types of problems one is regression problems and another one is classification problems so regression is something like this data sample data which we are seeing here is all about regression like based on the age we are going to predict the continuous output variable which is the claims per average claims per year so classification problem is something different uh, one example i can give you is uh, uh, sms spam detection so uh, if the message that you are sending if you want to create a model that will help you to uh, identify if that message is a spam or not spam not spam so that kind of problem is a uh, that comes under uh, classification problem so here in this data set sample data set which you are seeing is it would be a regression problem so here dot ensemble will give you uh, the list of algorithms uh, you know you can work with so ensemble is something like it is not a single algorithm like uh, it will actually um, uh, you know uh, take the average of results from more than one uh, model so probably it can go with uh, multiple decision trees and uh, uh, it will look at the uh, result of each and every tree and uh, uh, probably it will average out uh, the results so if you want to go in depth of uh, the algorithm itself i suggest you to learn more about uh, the decision tree algorithm random forest algorithm or uh, in the future videos i can help you to go in depth of that algorithm to understand uh, that particular algorithm in detail so in this uh, the in this uh, video it is out of scope so let's just quickly have a look at the uh, available algorithms in scikit-learn so what we are doing is we are uh, importing random forest regressor so random forest algorithm has regression as well as classification algorithm in it so we are going to use regressor so that's what i'm saying like uh, if you want to go you know if you want to know the details on that particular algorithm you can uh, there are a lot of online materials are available you can go ahead or if you want from me probably you need to wait and uh, i can probably try to help you to um, understand the details in that algorithm in future courses so we are creating a instance rf regressor uh, you can give a name of your choice and uh, the method random forest regressor we are actually trying to uh, use estimators estimators the number of trees which you are going to use and the random state uh, these are all uh, we call it as hyper parameters we can tune these parameters and uh, see how the accuracy varies maximum depth the minimum sample split so on so don't worry about all these hyper parameters as of now because uh, we need to have a separate class for hyper parameters itself uh, it is very important to adjust those parameters to uh, gain accuracy of your uh, model so rf regressor dot fit of the x frame i mean the x matrix and y matrix which we have already built so fit is the method which will help you to uh, it is self explanatory so it will help you to fit the data into this particular model which we are defining here so in the out you can see the random forest regressor model is created i mean it's trained you need to say that particular term the model is now trained with the data which we input it so maximum depth and all these parameters you can see here so don't worry about much 
So in the next cell, we are actually visualizing the re results, regression results. So plot that scatter of x, y will give you the actual, the red points or actual data. The second line, plt dot plot of uh, the independent variable, and for y, we are not going to input in the actual. We are trying to predict. The predict method is used uh, out of the model r of r of regressor dot predict, and passing in the x data will give you the predictions of that model so since this is a very simple data set uh, the model has almost predicted correctly for all the input points and uh, even if you try to predict any unseen data like uh, 60 is already there if you try to predict any 66 64 the model will give you its prediction uh, okay so so this is what machine learning is like we are uh, we have a data we need to process it we need to um, had the model is already there for you in scikit-learn so uh, your work is to fit the data process the data i mean pre-process the data then fit the data and uh, check the accuracy and if it is not that much good you need to retrain the model and uh, uh, help the model to gain accuracy and uh, make it ready for uh, a better prediction so i hope you understand and got some basic idea about uh, uh, the machine learning algorithms like you can just experiment uh, the scikit learn algorithms like uh, if it is not like you have to fit only this model you can experiment a lot of other models with any sample data like this so you, will, you will get a lot of idea on what is going behind and uh, uh, you will be an expert in data science and machine learning and uh, uh, it will it will be really helpful for your uh, Carrier. So I hope this video is helpful and uh, please subscribe to my channel and support me. So uh, that encourages me to do more videos for you. So thank you very much for watching and uh, I, I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much.